one of the interesting things around Linkscape is that although, although I designed it, I designed it for a me, right? Essentially, okay, I'm an SEO expert who's had seven years in the business, been doing this, you know, sort of day in, day out, and these are all the things that I want to see in a tool. This is what I want in software. Uh, and the frustrating part about that was that there's not a lot of me's out there, right? There's not a lot of Rand Fishkin style SEOs who can use software at, at, in that particular fashion. And so it was in probably about nine months later that we realized, okay, we need to, we need to rebuild this in a different way. And we launched about, I guess, a little more than a year later, Open Site Explorer, which has gone on to become incredibly popular, gets, gets uh, a quarter million, oh, sorry, yeah, a quarter million or so visits a month and a few million requests uh, a week for information. So this tool essentially turned into Open Site Explorer over time. And one of the other lessons that I would, that I would urge folks who are thinking about startups is that if, you, if you're an expert in your particular field, right, you've been doing email marketing, you've been doing uh, energy trading, you've been doing you know, uh, travel services, and you think, oh, I'm going to build a startup that, that, or a software piece that does what I want, that solves my personal problem, that's a really good idea. What's a bad idea is building it only for expert level folks like yourself. You need, you, you need to be able to make a market accessible service, and that's that was a big challenge for us. I think it took me a long time. I actually, my, uh, my VC folks, my board of directors, was always encouraging me, you need to hire a director of product. You need to get someone in who can you know, run the product division because you're too in the weeds, too deep in the data to be able to see the big picture. And that worked out. Actually, I, I hired a guy from Microsoft, uh, Open Site Explorer, and, and Pro Membership, essentially the service that we offer, the software subscription service, it started at 39. Uh, it moves along from essentially what was a collection of here's you know, 20, 30 tools and resources uh, that anyone can use whenever you need them, which worked well for a specific set of kind of SEO professionals, a subset of our customers, to uh, a single campaign-based web app. And that was something that we, we actually learned through competitive intelligence. We saw some competitors in our space building software that was more campaign-based, did everything all in one, and seeing the, pro the success that those products had and the intuition that we had around, oh, those, those products actually keep people on the service longer than, than our specific tool set, which in a recurring revenue business is critical to success. You need to have, you need to make sure that the people who are subscribing to your service stay with it for weeks and months and years, not uh, just a few <coughs> weeks or days. So this slide actually shows the subscription growth of SEO Moz uh, from 2007. So we had about 800 subscribers at the end of 2007. Uh, and I believe our, our membership, which at the time was called Premium, had gone from $39 to $49 a month. In 2008, uh, at the end of the year, we had about 2,500 subscribers. 2009, we go up to 4,000. Uh, in 2010, I think we ended last year with just about 70, 7,200 or so, 7,100. And this year, uh, we're estimating that we're, we're actually going to double that. And today, just today, we're at, uh, just looked at it, I think it's around 10,400 members. So it's, it's outpacing this growth. So it's, it's possible we'll beat that number. But you, you get this idea that kind of the growth is not uh, like the hockey stick you'll see in a lot of presentations from startup guys, right? You don't, what you don't see is do, 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 whew, flying up, right? It's sort of slow, steady progress. Five or six years from now, if it continues along this growth rate, which is about a 50, 60% growth rate, depending on the year, it's gonna look great, but it's a very step function process. It's not the classic you know, Facebook kind of story where the first two years it's nothing and then it spikes, or Twitter where you know, the first three years, they, people sent 40 million tweets, and then yesterday they sent 40 million tweets. Right? So that, that process, that scale, uh, isn't the kind of business that we've got. So yeah, here you go. This is today, as of a couple days ago, we've got about 10,300 uh, subscribers. Our, our API, which serves out data from the Linkscape product, has about 20 paying customers and 250 total users. Uh, we have 
32 employees. We just welcomed a new software engineer. What's today? Tuesday? Must have been like today in the States, so Monday in the States. Uh, our board of directors remains the same, which is relatively rare uh, to see. Usually as businesses scale, as a lot of venture-backed businesses scale, they will bring in an independent outside board member. And we've been, we've actually been looking for someone but haven't found that perfect fit. And since Jillian and I control the board, we can sort of dictate terms. I, I would urge you, I, it's my opinion, my bias to believe that a board of directors should be run by the entrepreneur. Um, I think most famously Mark Zuckerberg right, does that at Facebook where he, despite not owning 51% you know, of the company, he has uh, regulations written into the bylaws of Facebook saying that he'll always control the board, which is interesting, but that's what's been done at Google, it's, what's been, it's what was done at Microsoft. So a lot of these big companies, I think, I think venture capitalists and investors are coming around to this idea that, oh, maybe I don't, maybe I don't need to run the company or be able to vote people off, uh, vote the entrepreneur down. So you can see our, uh, our revenue raised last year. So last year we did about 5.7 million. And this number is particularly important for, uh, for software startup folks. Your, your gross margin is gonna be extremely important because it's how people will value you. So when we get a, a market assessment of SEO Moz's value, they take this number, 5.7 million, and they're gonna multiply it by uh, some number that's based on our revenue model and our margin. So at this margin and with a subscription revenue business, we're probably worth between uh, four and six times that number. If we were in an advertising-based business and our margins were around 60%, which would be pretty good for an ad-based business, that number would probably be two, two and a half X, right? So instead of being worth 20 or $30 million, we'd be worth you know, 12 to 15. And, and that would be the price that essentially an an outside company might come in and offer uh, to buy the company at. The, the, the weird thing about margins is that you, I would not recommend, and I don't, think, I don't think anyone in the startup world would recommend optimizing around margins or towards margin at the beginning of a software-based business. You really wanna do that at a later stage because growth, reinvestment, is so important. Also, just, to be totally clear, this is gross margin, not net margin. So this is essentially just the cost of running the software service. If we, you know, we could, we're not going to, there's no way we, we would, but if we needed to, right, we could fire probably 25 of the staff, keep it running with a skeleton crew, uh, just pay the operations in terms of web hosting, that kind of stuff. And that would be essentially what the gross margin is. So the cost structure of running the service, providing the service to customers is 17%.